it's hard to describe a place like Patagonia. Most people only dream of visiting this amazing place, yet I went with a pack of motoring journalists with the mission of experiencing a group of Subaru crossovers in what most people probably consider their natural habitat. From our home base in Detroit, we flew to Atlanta and then caught a 12-hour flight to Buenos Aires, Argentina. A good night's sleep later, we boarded a plane from Buenos Aires to El Calafate, near the edge of the southern Patagonian ice field. Our hotel sat on a plot of land over 3,000 hectares in size. In every direction, Patagonia was laid out in all of its splendor. Vast plains, lakes cut by glaciers, and the snow-capped Andes Mountains to our backs. This was also where we finally met our Subaru Steeds. Six crossovers, Outbacks, Foresters, and XVs would take us on a thousand mile journey through Argentina, into Chile, back into Argentina, finally ending at the southernmost city in the world. El Calafate sort of reminds me of a small skiing town you'd find in Colorado. Makes sense since it's a gateway point for people looking to visit Los Glaciares National Park, home to the Perito Moreno Glacier. From the glacier, we drove across the high plains of Argentina and into Chile, at a border crossing that looked more like an old world trading post than a traditional guarded entry point into another country. Shepherds guided us across the border and into the Chilean wilderness, where a long drive down dusty trails led us to our next stopping point, just outside the Torres del Paine National Park. Once inside the Torres del Paine Park, we were met with mountains, lakes, rivers, and winding dirt roads that linked all of the picturesque parts together. We gave the Subarus a rest on our first day at the park, and McGraw and I spent the day up to our waists in rushing water, trying to catch one of the many giant salmon swimming upstream. And the next day, back in the cars, we took in a long scenic drive that's probably one of the best I've ever done. The cars performed admirably. Even over rocks and gravel, the Subarus were confident and well-mannered. Natural habitats, indeed. If there's one thing I'll remember most from the Patagonia adventure, it's the Torres del Paine Park. 242,242 hectares in size, it's one of the largest and most visited parks in Chile, and I can absolutely see why. Bridges over rushing water led us to wooded paths that spit us out at vistas more scenic than I can ever dream about. Sad to leave the park, we trekked through the remainder of Chile until we arrived at the port city of Punta Arenas. From there, we'd board a car ferry and journey across the Strait of Magellan, a two-hour boat ride filled with sights of penguins, dolphins, and even an orca. Once across, our merry band of Subarus spent hours driving down some seriously rocky roads, destined for the town of Ushuaia, our final point on the journey. But on the way, we stopped at something absolutely incredible. The site of the Desdemona shipwreck. This is where a huge cargo ship wrecked ashore some 30 years ago, and it's remained largely intact. At low tide, you can walk right up to the side of the ship to see how she's been weathered and eroded by the water, wind, and sand. It's amazing to think that this ship has sat here for 30 years and no one's touched it. She just sits as yet another stunning point on the journey. And might I say, our Subarus looked damn good on the beach next to this weathered beauty. Once in Ushuaia, we celebrated the end of the journey with a delicious meal at a local pub. This town is commonly referred to as the end of the world. It's the southernmost city on Earth and the closest I'll ever be to Antarctica. As for the Subarus, we considered the blemishes and stone ships badges of honor. We used our total allotment of spare tires and every windshield needed to be replaced. If I had to pick a favorite of the bunch, it's the XV, the cross trek as we know it in the US. It's right sized, looks butch and tough, and still offers enough comfort and convenience for everyday use on a budget. But every single one of the Subarus fared well. The Forester felt like the workhorse, while the Outback struck us as the most comfortable, passenger friendly car. The best thing though is that you can buy every single one of these crossovers today and for not a lot of coin. And while you'll probably never drive them to the end of the world like we did, know that they're totally up to the task. Just make sure you budget an entire week for the Torres del Paine Park and be sure to bring an extra tire or three.
For Autoblog, I'm Stephen Ewing.